Praise the Lord, ye heavens adore him, praise him, angels in the height. Sun and moon rejoice before him, him. praise him, O ye stars of light. light. Hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. What a great way to start our day to day. And of course, the greatest praise that we can give God is not only with our lips, but with the service that we give him in our minds and in our bodies. Say it with me, Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Remember Hebrews 3 and verse 13, exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Uh, This morning, I wanted to think with you real quickly about uh, a reference that I made in the sermon this this past Sunday on repentance. I just quickly brought up uh, the example of Jezebel that's mentioned in Revelation 2. Now, uh, sometimes I remember things when I'm preaching, and uh, I can't remember the reference And so uh, I don't like to do that. I I like to document everything that I preach and teach. And uh, since I did not have the reference ready, I thought maybe this morning we'd just spend a couple moments uh, thinking about that reference that I made to Jezebel. Now, uh, that name probably rings a bell with you. Even people that really make no claim to be religious, they've heard that name Jezebel. And Jezebel seems to be associated with the character of one uh, who is a seductress. And that is for good reason. The, uh, the Jezebel of the Bible uh, is that kind of character. Now, the Jezebel that's mentioned in Revelation 2, most likely, is not the historic Jezebel that we read about back in 1 Kings 16. But let me just begin... Uh, by having us look at Revelation 2. And I want us to notice in particular uh, what, what is being written to the angel of the church in Thyatira. And uh, we'll pick up the reading, uh, I guess, about verse 18, uh, where the, uh, the command is given to write, these things says the Son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. I know your works. Now he's talking about the church there in Thyatira as a whole. I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. But in verse 20 he says, Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants, to commit sexual immorality, and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. This is the passage that I quickly made reference to this past Sunday in a sermon on repentance. And uh, I wish that I would have thought about it ahead of time and documented it because I think it's really worth our time to think about this thought that is quickly expressed there, but that we can really spend a lot of time thinking about and uh, be the better off for it. Uh, So you have this woman Jezebel. Now, let me just bring up quickly the historic Jezebel. Uh, Jezebel, we, we find out about her back in 1 Kings chapter 16 when we're talking about uh, the evil King Ahab, the king of Israel. Jezebel was his wife, and her father was a man named Ethbaal, which as you can tell from his name, uh, was had an idolatrous background. And 
And she had an idolatrous background. It was it was a woman that the king of Israel had no business marrying, but uh, she used her influence, and she was very persuasive. She really just led the king around like uh, someone who had a ring in their nose, and she just led him around by that. Uh, she was able to seduce him into doing uh, anything that she wanted. And uh, now keep in mind that uh, she lived and uh, King Ahab were probably uh, more than 900 years before Christ. And so uh, this message in Revelation would not be uh, to someone uh, that long ago. So the other option is it's someone who had the character of this woman. And so, you know, through the the uh, chapters Revelation 2 and 3 that are being written to the seven churches of Asia, it's not an uncommon thing to, to use the character of an, of an ancient uh, uh, character in the Bible to compare to a person there that uh, they were having trouble with. For example, uh, back in verses uh, 12 and forward of Revelation 2 uh, in the message to the church at Pergamos, uh, he talks about those who have the doctrine of Balaam. And, of course, uh, Balaam was that prophet that Balak, the king of Moab, tried to use for his evil resources back in Numbers 22 through 24. So uh, it wasn't that literal Balaam, but those who had the doctrine of Balaam. So as we said, she, she is the wife uh, of Ahab. She was a conniving kind of woman, but she was very persuasive and, and uh, artful in the way that she could get her husband uh, to do her bidding. And she was guilty of a lot of evil herself. When you, you read about uh, uh, Jezebel in uh, Numbers, or pardon me, yes, uh, in First Kings chapter 18 and verse 13, you can read there about her killing the prophets of God. And in fact, a, a man there named Obadiah had uh, hidden the prophets of God 50 to a cave, uh, trying to keep Jezebel from killing God's prophets. And then uh, in 1 Kings chapter 19, uh, she gets on, the, uh, on a chase after uh, the great prophet Elijah. And uh, he, he is forced to flee. And uh, you, you just see what kind of woman she is. All the prophets of God, she's dead set against them. She is an, an idolatrous woman. And, of course, the prophets of God would speak against that. She doesn't want anything to do with that. That's the kind of character we're talking about. And then in 1 Kings chapter 21, you read the story about Naboth's vineyard. I, did, I would just encourage you to go back and read these stories. Uh, we can't take the time to do that in just a short talk like this, but go back and, and read about Jezebel. Uh, if you start in 1 Kings 16 and go through chapter 21, you, you know, you're talking about, what, maybe six or seven chapters here, uh, you'll pick up a lot of the character of this woman. Naboth's vineyard uh, was a, a man who had a vineyard that joined very near uh, the king's palace there, and, and the king wanted it and, and offered a fair price for it uh, or uh, offered to give a better vineyard. He just wanted this one because it was close uh, to his property there. And Naboth said no, he wasn't interested in selling uh, because it was his family inheritance. And it made the king uh, so sad that he couldn't have that land. And when Jezebel saw that, she said, well, there's no reason why you can't have that land. And she made up a story about Naboth that led to his execution. That's the kind of woman that we're talking about. So the message I want to get to is back here in, uh, in Revelation 2 and uh, verses 20 and 21, where God is talking about this woman Jezebel, and uh, the way that he has dealt with her. So remember those words with me. Uh, he says that you have this woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. She's teaching and seducing Christians to commit sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols. But look at verse 21, how 
God dealt with her, how Jesus dealt with her. I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. And I want you to notice this word time. If you're reading the King James Version, it says, I gave her space. And the word that we're talking about there in Strong's is the word chronos. If you have an expensive timepiece on your wrist, it may say chronometer. That has to do with time. And Strong simply says, a space of time. And it's uh, to be distinguished from another word which designates a fixed or special occasion. So when, uh, when God says, I gave her time to repent, he's talking about a space of time designated that he allowed her to change her evil ways and get right with God. But again, when you notice uh, what the Bible says there, he says, I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and what? And she did not repent. So she did not take advantage of that time, that space of time that God gave her to repent. That was my message for Sunday, is how we're using the time that God gives us Are we using it to repent? And the thing is, how we live our lives shows God what we think about the time that he's giving us to repent. I mentioned in the sermon that, you know, I personally, uh, I went through a rebellious time in my life, and if God had judged me then, I would surely have been lost eternally. And so I recognize that God gave me personally time to repent and make my life right, and that was my salvation. Had he not given me that time, I would have been lost. But, you know, God's giving all of us time, and where we are in our spiritual lives right now and how we're handling that time tells God where our heart is. Jezebel did not use her time to repent. And there is a a passage of Scripture Uh, over in Romans chapter 2 that you have to think about when it comes to how you're handling this idea of the time God gives us to repent. Look at that with me in Romans chapter 2. Paul says, Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Now listen to verse 4. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering? not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. God's goodness is shown in this time that he gives to repent, this space, this chronos that he's giving us. So you and I are enjoying the time that God gives us today. Do we have things in our life that need to be made right? If I make them right today, I show God that I treasure his goodness, his forbearance, his long-suffering. If I just continue along in sin, then I spit on God's goodness. Now, that's that's just the bottom line. There's no way to candy coat that. If God is so good as to allow me to live and give me time to make my life right, then I'd better make it right. If I don't, that's a direct reflection on my attitude toward God. Let's pray. Holy Father, we pray that you'll help us to learn from the example of this Jezebel from Revelation 2. And when you are so good to give us time to make our lives right, Father, we pray that we'll treasure this time and make our lives right, that we will not waste this time. Father, you've, you have awakened us today and given us the light of another day. Help us to make the most of it. Help us not to waste our time, not to just let it dwindle away, but to determine that we will make our lives right with you now and keep them right in the future. Please forgive our sins, Father. Help us to repent and to forgive those who sin against us. 
When you're finished with us here, bring us home to be with you forever is our prayer in Jesus' name, and amen. I'm so thankful that you took just a little time uh, to think about these spiritual things. I hope God will bless you to have a great day. Praise the Lord, for he has spoken, worlds his mighty voice obeyed. Laws which never shall be broken, broken, for their guidance he hath made. Hallelujah.